world. You know what it is, your boy Big Will. Back here with another episode of Life After Prison. I want to bring you to a story that I, um, that I recall one of my, uh, probably 2015, right before I was arrested then and bailed out, and it was a, uh, hell of a, hell of a, hell of an ordeal that transpired because of this case, um, but anyhow, how the story went, and I don't know what I had with me, it might have been an angel, um, maybe it was just destiny, it was my fate to intervene in my life at the rate I was going, but these people, they're going to cut each other over to get, they're going to get killed on a highway. Unbelievable. <sighs> Anyways, I'm sorry. So, and what reminded me of this whole trend, trends, these, this whole ordeal transpiring was, I'm traveling to Boston now, right now, and, um, a stady had come in flying behind me. He had his lights on. Now, I was, I was traveling at a high rate of speed, but I wasn't speeding. 85, I don't call it speeding. <laughs> the speed limit, yes, I was speeding. To my, to my preference, no, I wasn't. Anyways, when I noticed the cop behind me, there was a second state trooper with, but he was in a, um, like a 4x4 four four. that I seen his lights coming from his, his dashboard and, and shit like that but I didn't know but I you know I quickly said to myself Will you're legal <clears throat> nothing that you know you might you might be going a little fast but there's nothing to worry about you know what I'm saying what, you know what do they get two cops trying to pull you over for anyways no big deal so as I drifted from the middle lane to, uh, s s you know, slow lane, they quickly just flew by me. <laughs> but it just brought back memories of the time that I was, um, and, uh, I went, I went to Rhode Island from Massachusetts to, um, pick up some illegal narcotics. A friend, myself and a friend, um, I had had a rent the car because the car, my car I had totaled um, pretty, I don't know, probably a couple weeks earlier, I totaled it um, driving under the influence of, of um, drugs and I fell out at the wheel while I was driving so for you, that, for you that don't know what fell out is, is I, I overdosed at the wheel while I was driving. And I drifted off to the side of the road. A couple of guys were pulling out of the gas station and I took the whole nose off of their car. I pulled over, I got arrested. I was saved several times by knock on at the hospital. Um, woke up handcuffed at the hospital bed and don't know didn't know what happened until you know cops explained to me what was going on and little by little I got my recollection back but me and a friend had gone to Rhode Island to pick up drugs and I live where I live it's probably a 20 minute 30 minute ride and um, I had to drive through Somerset Mass, Swansea Mass, Seekonk Mass to get to Rhode Island and I had to go to, go through North Providence, um, Providence, Rhode Island. That's where I my destination was. We picked up drugs, we turned back. Well when on our way back we pulled over in Seekonk to get gasoline. Now we were um, just past the the gas station there was a uh, Cotty's furniture and it was up on a hill um, and I had I guess so this gas station was on a local route okay where people 
traveled every day to uh, buy drugs, okay? It was on, um, people stopped because it was right off the highway, right back on. So when you had drugs, that's what you did. You pulled over at this uh, place, you got your drugs, and you jump right back on the highway. You know, you didn't want to travel too far with it in case you were being followed, blah, 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 all that, you know, um, all, all of that information. So we pulled over at this gas station at the Cardi's. It was a mobile gas station. And like I said, this gas station was on a local route, so, you know, people used it all the time. But during, when people pull over and use the gas station, they would also take the opportunity, if they felt safe, they weren't being followed or whatever, they would take the opportunity to get high. Which on the way back that day, I, uh, my friend was driving, I got high, okay? So he pulled into, we pulled into the gas station, I went in, I filled up the gas, he got high, right? So I guess there was a phone call to the local police department of um, drug use in the area, right? And like I say, it wasn't uncommon, okay? So what they did is they pulled off into the Cotty's um, gas station and they were sitting up and they were watching with binoculars, okay? So while I was pumping the gas, they claimed that they saw my friend getting high with the binoculars. Now, the point where this story got, um, this story became false is that they said that they saw, um, that they went back to the gas station and that they picked up a brown bag that had um, empty bags from being uh, people getting high. They found empty heroin bags. They said they found empty bags inside of a Burger King bag wrapped up and put inside there. Now, it wasn't ours, okay? I can tell you that we did get high. I can tell you that we pulled over. I can tell you we was in the gas station. But I will tell you that the bag that they found in the Burger King bag was not ours. So the, the fact that they had gotten a call of people um, of drug use in the area, that's true. That was all true. Okay? They did get a call. I mean, like I said, it was not, it was not uncommon for people to pull over there and get high. Okay? But the fact that it was, it wasn't us. So, but when they saw us, anyways, we pulled back on the highway, and lo and behold, we looked back and we saw a cruiser. Then we seen two. And uh, my friend was driving, and he told me, hey, Will, I think we're being chased. And I'm like, man, fuck off. You know what I mean? He's like, no, serious. So I, when I looked around, I looked back and I seen that we were getting chased. I told him, yo, punch this thing like you stole it. You know, drive it like you stole it, dude. It's a rental car. I got insurance. Drive this thing. Don't let them get in front of you. Do what you got to do. We uh, we went on, we drove, we went on a high-speed chase. They started chasing us. We exceeded uh, mileage of 130 miles an hour, according to the police report. Um... Mind you, we didn't we didn't look, you know, at the mileage. We were just too nervous about um, hiding our drugs. So I ended up hiding all the drugs inside of the shifter. Okay, um, I put them all in there. The kid, uh, my friend, drove while I tried to hide the drugs. We crossed into we crossed over the median in the highway into the other side of the lane. Cops chased us on their side. Um, we had one in the median chasing us. We ended up taking an exit to come around. We jumped back on the highway. They were there. They chased us into uh, Fall River. When we came over the Bragg Bridge, they were doing work on the high on the one lane of the highway. And I had told my friend, "Listen, don't don't let them get in front of us. Whatever you do, let them stay in backwards. I don't care how fast or how slow we got to go. You know, if we're traveling ten miles an hour, they're not going to get out. If, as long as they can't get on the side of us, we still got free range." <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, he got nervous. He got nervous and um, he let one cruiser get in front of us, which he shoved us to the side like he edged us off to the side. 
which ended up letting another one get close to in front of us, and we had several in back of us. Now, when they brought us to, you know, they halted us, they slowed us down to a slow stop. When they slowed us down to a slow stop, my friend was nervous. He just threw the car in reverse. He hit the cruiser in back of us, threw it back in park, hit the cruiser in front of us. Um, but we had nowhere to go. We were blocked in, right? We were on this side was the median, this side was at, um, you know, we turned around to having cops drawn with guns at us, you know, screaming, get the fuck out of the car, blah, 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 all that bullshit. They pull us over. Now they got nothing in the, now they find nothing in the car, except they say that they found one empty bag underneath the passenger seat, which was total bullshit because when we used to get high, we would rip the bags in half. So I already knew the story was bullshit. They say they found the driver's hypodermic instrument on his door. Another bullshit story, because when the kid got high, he ex he put it in the barrel at Burger King. Then they say they had the empty bags. Now, they say they only had 10 empty bags. Another bullshit story, because my friend did 17 at the time. So the whole thing was bullshit, except for all the parts the police made fit, okay, into their story. Um, they ended up arresting us. They took us in two different cars. They brought the rental car back. They claim they never found any drugs in the car. They claim that they went through the car with a dog, a smelling dog, but they still never found any drugs in the car. So anything that we had was inside of the shifter. Who knows to this day if that car has never had any mechanical problems or has never had work done on it. There's probably still uh, $3,000 worth of heroin sitting in a rental car, which is another thing that you all should know about. Things happen, right? And I'm telling you a story of how we hid the drugs in the car and they never found it, which the rental car went back to Hertz Rental and they put their car back on the road, right? You could be one of them people that are driving a rental car and get pulled over and, you know, be, by speeding on the highway and the cops bring the dog over and now they got they find drugs in the car which are not yours, okay? I know this firsthand because like I say, I've never gotten caught with anybody else's drugs or to my knowledge, I don't know if anybody got caught with the drugs that we hid in the car. But once they towed it from us, we were never able to get the car back. They towed it from us. It was uh, involved in a high-speed chase. Then it went back to Hertz after their investigation was over. Um, they separated us. And what happened was my friend was nervous. Um, when I, when they, Like I said, they put us in two different cars. When I got back to the police department, I saw all his clothes on the floor. So they strip-searched us. They had him upstairs interrogation. Once they told him that they watched us with binoculars get high, he was just that high and nervous out of his mind from being chased that he told the cops everything that happened that day. Oh, this is what we did. We went there. We bought it. Um, he told that the rental car was in my ex-girlfriend's name because her car I had smashed a, day, uh, a week earlier. Um, you know, another time getting high, and I smashed the car, so we had to rent the car, and... He told that I told him to drive it and how I know he told us because the wording inside of their police report. Oh, uh, Mr. Dubas told me to drive it like I stole. The cops didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? That was just a, a term we would use. Oh, you're getting chased. Drive this thing like you stole it. It ain't ours. We're getting churned. And so certain things like that, I knew that he had sat down and had a little conversation that. You know, everybody knows you don't go. Now, I had actually gotten hit by the cop because they thought I was driving at one point. And they called me, oh, because I had a Superman shirt on at the time. Um, for all you that don't know, Superman is my favorite superhero, right? <laughs> but um, ironically, so they tell me, oh, what do you, you know, who do you think you are? Super driver? Because I had the S on the chest, right? You're super driver. You want to take us on a 130 mile chase, da da da. And I'm like, you know, I wasn't even driving, you know, I don't even know what you're talking about. 
Um, they asked, they told us, oh, Mr. Abello told us that, you know, you did this many, he did that many. And I told the cop, I don't know what you're talking about. They searched my arms for, for, for marks or holes. They didn't find anything, so they didn't know, um, that they got high. They were just going on his word. Now, when they pulled over that day, ironically, I was sick. I had a fever of, uh, 102. So when they pulled me over, I just acted like I was sleeping in the car. I told him that my friend asked me to give him a ride because he had to buy his son sneakers for his birthday, which it was around his, his son's birthday. And that was a story that we had used. We get pulled over. We're going to Providence Place Mall to get sneakers for your kid. He got nervous and just told the whole story. Any of you from Fall River, you've probably heard about the story already, you know. Um, squeak, hey, sorry, guy, you know I had to tell it. But, um... Yeah, so we ended up getting on a high-speed chase. We got caught, and when I just saw the cops behind me flying up, it just brought back memories, like, holy shit, here they come again, you know? But then I'm saying, oh, well, you know, you didn't do nothing wrong, you know? And ironically, from that situation where I got pulled over, I went, we went to court. Uh, so over the weekend, I bailed out of the police department. My friend had warrants. He didn't bail out, Okay. Monday morning comes, we go, that was on a Friday. Monday morning, we go to court. While I'm sitting in the courtroom, they pull in the, the weekend arrest first, right? So while I'm sitting there, my friend comes up, his case, they detain him. So I got nervous. I left the courtroom before they ever called me. So I had a warrant, I had a default warrant out. Um, I was on a run for 13 days. They went out, you know, they ended up coming to my house. They found me hiding in the closet. They arrested me. But when I got arrested, excuse me, when I got arrested, excuse me, when I got arrested, I actually turned, I committed myself to a, um, a detox, a residential detox um, in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. So when I sectioned myself, I went there for 30 days. My friend had already been, um, when he got arrested and they detained him, he did the same thing. He sectioned himself. So when he got, when I was on a run, I, you know, I talked to him on the phone and stuff. No, I didn't know he told all of this shit, the, you know, at the beginning. I didn't, I just thought it was all hearsay from the cops. Oh, your friend said this, your friend said that. I didn't know none of that until I got the paperwork. And I was, when I, so when I was on the run, he told me, hey, well, when you get arrested, section yourself, come up here for a little bit, you know what I'm saying? We get a little bit more freedom, but it's still, it's still a jail. You still get locked down like a jail. You just get a little bit more freedom. Um, but it's the same thing with sexing yourself. It's still, or someone has you sectioned because you're out of control on drugs and alcohol. They sectioned me and it's not, it's not like going to a detox when you're, um, free when you can leave whenever you want or whatever when your section you go and you have to stay you have to follow a regimen they they treat you like you're you're an inmate you're a state inmate and when you're sectioned you're court ordered to go there you know so when i sectioned myself i um i went there for 30 days when i went to the day that i got out of bridgewater I had a court date the next day, so from home I went to a court, and now when I went to court, the the DA wanted to hold me, he wanted to detain me, and the judge said, I'm not going to detain this man, he just sectioned himself for 30 days, I told her I was on the list of a program to get myself into a sober house, um, the judge went with it, and she let me out, which I was highly surprised because I, you know, I had already had record of of being arrested and raided, and you know, several times for drugs, and she went with it, um, and she let me go. But it was just the way things turned out. It's it was crazy. Um, I'll give you part two to this because this video is getting kind of long. I'll give you part two to this video later. Part two come and watch part two. You you think this was crazy how she let me out? Wait till you hear part two. But well, that's for the next one. Big world life after prison. Hey, don't forget, like and subscribe. Hit the video hit the 
thumbs up. You know what I'm saying? Just want to sit around, get entertained on someone else's bullshit. Come on, sit down and watch it. It's only our life stories. If I got enough guts to sit and tell you about it, have the decency to sit and listen to it. But uh, Big Will Life After Prison, I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Any of you who have been here from the beginning, appreciate you. Um, you see, I ain't nervous, right? I had that infection, took my top teeth out, and look, I'm still here on camera. It's because I'm not vain. I used to be. I'm not worried about what you think. I'm transparent. This is my life. This is who I am. I'll see you all in the next one. Big Will Life After Prison. Time to enjoy Boston. Peace.